And the beauty of that program is the fact that it is going to be virtual and it is going to be you learning according to your pace. And another beauty of the program is that it is coming after the One Youth Two Skill program. So you see, this government has a lot of goodies in stock for us. But however, our job here this morning on Weekend Show is to ensure that you understand the uh, level up an Amber program from all ramification. To do justice to that, we have the special advisor to um, the governor of Anambra State talk about Dr. Nelson Omenoa. Doc, you're welcome to Weekend Show. Um, um, thank uh, you. I hope I can call you Mayor. <laughs> I've even had it called Doc. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm happy to be here today and to discuss about uh, what we are doing in trying to empower the youth and bring them up to speed. Um, good morning, Dan Ambra. Uh, let's um, have this conversation. Thank you. Um, oh, right. Sorry, David. Uh, yeah. Sorry, sorry. I'm, I'm, when I, sorry, sorry yeah, to cut short. When I saw the write-up, you made the announcements, the flyers, and all the publicity. The first question that came to my mind is, what inspired this? Yeah. And this is actually the initiative of the governor. Um, driven under the Office of the Special Advisor, Business um, Incubation and Innovation, uh, Ms. Ching Okole. Um, it's essentially to help bring to speed uh, you know, the state and uh, the young people in the state on what technology and uh, digital skills can do for um, them and for us. So it's uh, one of the initiatives that um, is contained in the Purpose Manifesto. That's the contract that the governor has within the um, Anambra. If you go, for instance, um, item 5 on page 40 of the Purpose Manifesto there, uh, you find what the governor said about creating a digital tribe. Um, the world has gone on to become a global village. The Japanese will say that it is a narrow road. Uh, and that is only possible because of um, technology. Yeah. So for us, the government, the government and the governor is quite very passionate about um, making sure that Anambra youths are not left behind. Uh, you can do a whole lot of things with technology. And for us, it is to provide that enabling environment, to provide those enabling skills, uh, expose us to opportunities that will make Anambra youths um, useful and productive at home and exportable to the world. So here is uh, the government and here is the governor saying to Indian Ambra youth, come, let's equip you with the digital skills that will help you to advance your businesses, that will help you become a key player in the socio-economic um, activities of the world, and most importantly, to create a robust digital ecosystem in the state. So that is essentially what um, you know, this um, solution innovation district, you know, is geared towards achieving. It's geared towards achieving a digital tribe. As a matter of fact, uh, three weeks ago was the launch, and that signal a uh, commencement uh, of the establishment of a digital tribe. All right. Now, looking at that uh, idea behind the digital tribe, you also emphasize how it fits into the vision of the state government. Tell us, what is the scope? What is this first step we are taking in, in creating um, uh, this digital tribe? This particular program, what, how, what is this covering? What are the scope? What are the uh, requirements for participation? Um, first and foremost, um, the governor says um, technology, everything, everywhere technology. So this is also one of those steps taken by the government to you know, add flesh and put in concrete terms uh, the promises that he made to Ndanambra. I, I will me refer to page five of the Purpose Manifesto, uh, where the governor said that um, programs, youth programs, must be inclusive and must be sustainable, and of course, geared towards wealth creation. Uh, it's quite um, the three critical variables here is that programs must be inclusive. By inclusivity, you, you're talking about um, people of different age, people of different gender, you know, male, female, uh, of different, of course, um, age brackets, uh, provided that you're youth, 
um, and the people of different um, demographical makeup. So that's essentially about inclusivity, you know, not trying to segment whether this person is from Anambra state or not. Well, provided you are a youth and you are in Anambra, you are to be part of this program. Uh, whether you are able and disabled, uh, or, or uh, you are a person of special need, you have to be involved. That is what inclusivity here means. Then sust uh, sustainability has to deal with um, how those skills now you've now acquired would um, outlive this administration. So it is no longer the ad hoc way of doing things, um, the ad hoc way of um, uh, empowering. Now, we could, by the way, if it is not sustainable, it is not empowerment, because empowerment is meant to be sustainable. Mm -hmm. So uh, the governor, Professor Charles Soludo, is very quite passionate about um, the sustainability of programs. And one way, uh, and one thing I can tell you for sure is that um, uh, this initiative to create the YouTube tribe is a sustainable one because um, it's about um, sharpening your digital skills, equipping you with um, real-time skills that will make you competitive and make you quite productive. And ultimately, the end variable, which is uh, word creation. Um, these digital skills uh, would enable one to be able to work from anywhere. Irrespective of where, if you're in Anambra, you can actually be doing businesses uh, with somebody in Abuja, Lagos. You don't need to be there physically. You can also be working for a company in Canada, in US, in UK, depending on, uh, irrespective of the fact that you're in Anambra. So you can see that um, this initiative is, is thought through very well. It's actually the initiative of Mr. Governor. What we are all doing is to implement the letter, the you know, this, the, if you like, um, the details of the Purpose Manifesto. So essentially for these 20,000 youth that we are going to train, uh, of course, we are, the Office of the SPAD on um, Business Incubation Innovation um, is actually partnering with Microsoft and the um, World Lab Foundation to get this to um, happen. And uh, we are grateful to our willing partners, and this is also because um, We've um, taken steps to make open what we want to do for them. And that is why you see willing investors, willing partners coming on board to make sure that they support this initiative to come alive. To summarize, we are very much passionate about um, making every Anambra youth a better, passion, a better uh, version of him or herself. Uh, for us, empowerment is all about um, you know, moving one from point A to point B. We are all trying to do this, bear in mind that the world is evolving and Anambra can't afford to be left behind. Mm -hmm. We are doing this because we understand that the world is driven by technology and technology uh, is the greatest enabler that we uh, and the, the greatest leveler that can help us or uh, bring us to the same table with um, any class of person or any uh, or, uh, within our uh, one country. So for us, we are equipping our young people. We are making sure that we give them that digital skills and exposure that will make them um, competitive youth and that can ultimately give them the opportunity to fight for yourself and, and of course um, for their family and become key players in the economy. So I'd like, I'd like you to um, enlighten us more on some of the digital skills to learn. Yeah, there are a whole lot of them. Um, of course, we are getting to the point where, um, like the governor said, by October this year uh, or thereabout, we'll be having the Innovators um, Festival uh, for a week program that would uh, help that, that would actually help people who are into uh, various innovative, uh, if you like, uh, undertakings to come on board for us to see what they have and then see how the government can support them. But, be, but in addition to that, uh, we are looking at exposing people to various um, coding skills, uh, artificial intelligence, um, graphic designs, um, if you like, um, 
all those um, digital schools that will help them to uh, promote businesses and that will help them become very useful uh, to themselves. So that is essentially what we are focusing on. We are focusing on real-time digital skills uh, beyond the, um, if you like, beyond basic um, ICT skills. We are looking at also the advanced one. Like I said, I'm coding, artificial intelligence, robotics, and the one that can help them become a marketing strategist. Yeah. So how, how can one be a part of the level of program? Yeah, yeah we've um, actually sent out um, the, the call for young people to apply. And well, one of them is you have to be very passionate. Uh, the form is, is one that you can fill online. Once you get that filled up, then you stand a chance uh, of being shortlisted. Uh, because um, as of the last count, we've gotten over uh, 10,000 young persons who have indicated interest. So we don't know um, when and how, many, how much of um, the young people are going to be involved. But ultimately, we are looking at training 20,000. So if we're over 20,000, we we'll have to go. So the 20,000, would they be trained over a four year period? No, no, it's within this, um, it's a three month, four month program, yeah, for, for, for a starter. Because um, it's going to be done virtually. So at the comfort of your um, oh. homes, you can key in and be part of it. Of course, I've taken a whole lot of online certification courses. Um, I'm here in Nigeria doing them. Uh, um, doing them, of course, they are foreign online courses. So that is the kind of thing we want to also introduce here. Uh, for a starter, we want to you know, bring everybody on board Mm -hmm. Train everybody virtually and then have a way of also selecting those that are very committed and then bring them um, physically and further sharpen their skills. So it's about combining both virtual and uh, physical. But for a start, we are doing virtual to enable people to um, be able to gain at their coming. Of course, uh, lessons are also going to be tape recorded and you can have access to them even after that particular class is over. So it's all about, you know, trying to bring down what is um, obtainable all over the world. That is um, essentially what um, this program is all about. And we are saying this um, is going to be a continuous um, exercise because um, the target is that by the time uh, we are done for the first four years, we must have trained, like the governor said, um, 100,000 young people on, the, on different skills. Um, if you participated in this, it doesn't mean you won't participate in another. So that is because why. That's the next question. Yeah, that is well. why the governor said um, it's one you two skills and even three skills. So the, the promise that the governor made in the People's Manifesto is that he's going to equip the number of youth with at least two skills. Uh, but from the way we are going, it will even get to three, four and even five skills. So yeah. I have a question. Yeah, yeah. My question is first, the registration, is it just virtual? It's online, yes. It, no physical? No, no form. physical, no, because um, once you, that is the way to go even start. Because so it's digital. It's because, yeah, it's digital, so you have to, there's no paperwork. So, so that to, means there are some things you must have before you think of registering, like you must, have are you? there things you must have? No, just basic information. No, I'm asking like, for instance, if it, the registration is virtual, I can, without having an Android phone or a smartphone or a laptop, I, can I just walk into a cyber cafe, register and be part you, of... You can, but you should also be sure that um, to be able to participate in, uh, in that training, you have to have the means uh, by Android. I think the basic is you must be very passionate and then you must have an Android phone mm. that can help you, you know... Uh, have access to participating in, 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 in real time. Otherwise, you might be tempted to keep playing the video each time the lectures come and go. So uh, it's advised that you have an iDrone phone and be able to uh, and be ready to key in in real time to listen to lectures. So you can work it all out with just a phone. You don't need a laptop. Yeah, no, you don't need a laptop oh, for, okay. for now. But you can also, if you have a laptop, it's also a good one too. Oh, okay. All right, you talked about the sustainability of uh, empowerment. And you also yeah. talked about 
uh, people uh, being able to acquire even one or one or, or one or more skills. Yeah. Uh, my question is, how will it be sustainable if I can benefit from all? Will I still be able to uh, uh, at least use those skills I had and contribute? Because your your emphasis is that these skills are meant to be. Uh, you are to contribute to the society after learning them. Yeah. Will it be sustainable if I learn different skills? Maybe I'm participating in one or two skills. I'm also participating in this one. Um, how can it, that sustainability of the program be achieved? Yeah, by actually by sustainability, we are looking at also what we are able to do with those skills, whether those skills can stand the test of time. Mm. That is um, essential what we mean by sustainability. Uh, if, uh, for instance, you are being offered political appointment and the, tomorrow the government of the day uh, goes, uh, you, you can see that um, you, you also have to leave. And when you leave and you're not able to get hold of any other thing, uh, you can see that um, you can't say that that political appointment is sustainable, for instance. Mm. Because um, that is why we believe that politics is not a, it's actually a vocation, it's not an occupation. Before you get into politics, you must have something you are doing, so that after politics, uh, after public service, you can go back to what you are doing. So that is to say that um, political positions are not sustainable. But if you have skill, um, the other skills are competitive skills, skills that the world wants. Then what it means is that. Uh, long after the uh, government that uh, provided uh, provide the skills had gone, you will still find out that you will still be using those skills to, you know, to fit for yourself uh, and uh, you will support your family and what have you. So the, the point is, the sustainability angle to this program is the fact that when you have these skills, you can be able to use them to do a whole lot of things for yourself, for your family, and for the country. You can be able to raise some money and be able to, you know, remit your taxes and, uh, you know, become useful to the society. So that is the angle we are talking about in terms of social media. However, uh, that um, you are a beneficiary of one utility skill, mm -hmm. and you also need to be a beneficiary of this. There's nothing wrong with that. As a matter of fact, um, why you teach skills? Essentially, it's about uh, the hard skills. Mm. The hard skills, you know, learn about solar, POP, welding. Idea. Now, these two skills, when you complement it with hard one, you teach skills, it, it gives you a perfect uh, mm. match because what it means is that you are able to use these two skills to sell those hard That's skills good. of you. Uh, if you are into Word or into Solar, for instance, you can be able to do graphic design, post online, Facebook, Twitter, you know, social media management, and uh, you, know, uh, you know, and begin to get clients from all over the country. So, what this these two skills does is beyond teaching you how you can leverage technology to do businesses, we also it also teach you the marketing strategy, how you can mm. uh, use technology and your digital skills to market yourself. So essentially, it's blend, blended the two will be a perfect match uh, towards ultimately becoming uh, a, a better business person and an entrepreneur. So my, my question now is, let's talk money. Is it, is, what's the cost of the program? And cost the, of what program? The digital level up and umbra program. Is, yeah. What's the cost? like? I'm talking about the, me now as an individual. Am I to pay? Am I to no, pay? No, pay is, is free. The government, is, government, yeah. government is providing a free. Of, of course, the Microsoft are in partnership with us. The World Lab um, Foundation, they are also partners on this project. So, you uh, know, youth is paying anything, not even a, a cent. So, certification, so I want to talk yeah, about certification. Certification, the Microsoft and Cert the World Lab uh, is digital. Provide, yeah, provides digital certificate. You can download that and... Uh, but you know, yes, why we learn emphasis on certification, but we also know that the world is now about what you sabi and not about certificate, it's, it's mm. certificate mm. and not um, 
certificate. We've got a lot of persons with certificate that can't um, bring value to the table. All so right, we are laying emphasis on what you know, what you submit. And the certification is free too. Yeah, it's free. Okay. Nobody is paying. It. Nobody um, is paying. Finally, it. my question on this issue will be about um, providing digital infrastructure. Yeah. What is the government doing in that direction? Because we cannot create a successful digital uh, tribe without an environment, an ecosystem, an infrastructure that supports that. The, 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 is there a, uh, it, what is the policy direction of the government? Yeah, the direction? government is doing a lot, a lot in that respect. As a matter of fact, the director, MD of um, ICT, the Influential Communication Technology uh, Agency, uh, my very good friend, the CFA, uh, Abata, is doing a whole lot in that respect. Of course, the governor is giving you the whole support to drive and to improve our infrastructure. Of course, you recall that um, before now, there is no harmonized, um, if you like, um, there is no digital infrastructure harmonization. And now we've got that in this administration. We've all have one noun at the moment, one domain name. And what is the that, the, the, that is, one you're referring to the government? And yeah, I'm talking it, about the what, whole... That, yes. that is what the government is doing. Okay. Uh, we've taken that if, uh, uh, a step further to providing uh, fiber ducts in, in the, across the states, you know, in our road infrastructure to make sure that uh, people have access to cheap, affordable, and fast internet. Mm. So... These are plans. That's I've already started, and uh, it's a work in progress. And uh, I can tell you that um, give us extra months, uh, you see a whole lot of changes because um, the government, when it says um, it's technology everywhere, everything technology, we mean business. We've already started uh, um, making sure that um, uh, our people are exposed to digital skills. So the next thing is to, you know, my that with our infrastructure, uh, digital infrastructure uh, if improvement, and then ultimately what you have is... Uh, so you're saying that we should give you three, four months? No, no. I, I, I already say it's work in progress. Okay. Within a few months, um, by that few months, you've seen a lot of persons that have been trained on digital skills, mm. and you see a whole lot of... Um, uh, and that in that if, if I'm in a community like in the Kula, I'll have fast internet. No, we will start with the major cities first. Okay. The government is starting with the major cities. Uh, it will actually get everywhere, but um, with major cities on the channel, we club here, uh, Oka. So, uh, and uh, of course, if you, when you come to cities, you, you target markets, you target schools, there's uh, high institutions, you target um, churches. These are the key areas and then before you know it uh, we, because what you need with improving digital infrastructure is um, just get started mm. and that is what we've just done we've already started mm. and uh, once you start try and errors you know trying to um, if you like um, go back and forth and ultimately you get it Rome was not built in a day but I can assure you that the commitment is there and I can assure you that um, uh, the government has its eye on the ball and um, the destination is um, what we are sure we'll get to. I'm really happy for this level of Anambra program because um, it's a good one. It's kudos to uh, Mr. Governor. But I, I have a lot of questions. We don't really have time. So I would like you to briefly just um, tell us qualification to be part of the program and maybe deadline for registration. Deadline is um, next two days. Next two days. Yeah, and the fourth actually. And yeah. Fourth. Yeah. Um, so, the point is. Um, qualification. Do I uh, need uh, any qualification? Uh, of to course. Um, to qualify, I've just said it time with a number. You have to be very passionate. You have to. You have to be willing to learn. So you don't need. Secondly, BSc No, you don't need it. That's why people in secondary school can also apply. Oh. Yeah. So people ask me a question. People in secondary school. Recall the day the launch was made. The students were there. You can, actu you can actually start, and uh, the, the, the idea is to, um, to even catch them young. So when they go, they, um, they can't depart from it. It's technology uh, for us is the, not just the future, it's, it's the now. And that is why a whole lot of um, emphasis is being laid on getting our young people to embrace technology and, and the industry skills. Yeah.
and the website for a registration. I'm not asking you for the website. It, I'm is just asking, like, like, is he acting? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. It's okay. I've seen, I've seen. Uh, people, people can um, <coughs> actually do a, a quick Google. Where yeah, you go solution, or even go to Instagram. Uh, the the S I D yeah the Instagram. Facebook they are there and uh, you know. No, what I'm asking is, is the page active? A lot of times we find out that a particular page Very for active. registration. Is, no, you can't talk about uh, not with this program, no, no, not with our ICTDA. Okay. Uh, they are very much active and uh, very much alive with committed team members. So uh, you know, always they're uploading and updating information. So, so we should rest assured that... Um, so even if you're working or you're a trader, once you have the passion, yeah. you can register. And you have, of course, the basic two, Android phones. So uh, at some point, government could, continue, it could support, oh, okay. um, but that would be... Uh, That's not what, important yeah, yet. Yes. Yeah. Come prepared first. Yeah, I will. Uh, yes, let's, let's I'm, not I'm, quote I'm, you because... I, I, I'm sure. <laughs> I, no, I, know, I, I know, I know. The point is that... Um, when, because at every contest, uh, at every program, we we'll have to have uh, the best and uh, yes. those um, exceptional ones will always be supported. That's the point oh, okay. I want to make here. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, that was Dr. Nelson Omeno, a special advisor to Government for Masolodo on Youth Empowerment Programs. He's been speaking to us on the Solution Innovation District empowering 20,000 in the Anambra with these two skills. Uh, in fact, the program is called the Anambra Digital Tribe. Uh, that is the topic we've discussed this morning. So the part of it, uh, the closure for the registration is April 4. So just ensure that you go to register and be part of the exercise. You can vis visit ABS um, Facebook pages. Uh, there you get um, the details on where to register and be part of the exercise. Ask Kwana now what are we? Uh, all right, so I want to thank you again, Dr. Nelson Omenora. Thank you for the uh, wealth of knowledge you've shared with us. And I'm happy to be here. Thank you so much. All right, so now we'll move over to the breakfast desk for our breakfast news this morning. Weekend show will continue. <laughs>